can you believe this? You, the nobody, Allah is making a mention of you in Himself. Imagine that you're just driving the car and you see something beautiful and you say, Subhanallah, Allah makes a mention of you. You know, Ubayy ibn Ka'b was once approached by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Ya Ubayy, inna Allah amarani an aqra alayka surat al-bayyina. Allah has commanded me to recite upon you surat al-bayyina. Uh, what was Ubayy supposed to ask? So go ahead, Prophet of Allah, tell me what surat al-bayyina is. What does he say? He said, Ya Rasulullah, wa thammani lak? He said, Prophet of Allah, he mentioned me by name. You know, through Jibreel alayhi salam, he, he really mentioned me by name. He said, Jibreel is telling you, Allah is commanding you to read this, uh, Ubay ibn Ka'b. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, um, Ubay ibn Ka'b left the room and he was crying, did not even listen to what Surah al bayna is. Because he was full of joy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making mention of him by name. Similarly, uh, the Prophet sallallahu once is addressing Khadija. And what did he say, Ya Khadija? إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُقْرِئُكِ السَّلَامِ He says, O oh Khadija, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending His peace, His salams, His greetings upon you. What does He say? Allahu huwa salam. Wa minhu salam. He said, Allah is indeed the salam. You know, the one with no deficiency, the one with the state of wholeness. And then He said, and from Him comes salam. And then she was so pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making a mention of her. Imagine that your boss in your company of 6,000 people or 8,000 people, they said you, they sent you a personal email. How would that make you feel? It's like you took speed. Huh? <laughs> it's like you are on drugs. Because, you know, the, 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 the boss or the big guy, he sees something in you that he gave you something, you know, personal. Now imagine you make a mention of Allah and Allah makes mention of you. See, no one can strip, no one can take this away from you. I don't care whether you approve of me or I don't care whether they approve of me. I don't care if she approves of me or not. If I say La ilaha illallah, Allah makes a mention of me. And this is an honor that no one, absolutely no one can challenge. No one can take away from me. You know, subhanAllah, if even you want a deeper relationship, because subhanAllah, you know, in Islam, to believe in the existence of God or in the existence of Allah is not of much consequence. We are told that to have a personal relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A relationship that impacts our lives positively. You know the Prophet ﷺ tells us, he said, Derive your manners from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are generous. And say, why are you generous? Because Allah is generous. I am deriving my character, my manners, from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To Allah they belong at their perfection. But to me as a human being, I try to get there as much as possible. Okay? And also finally the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan, That if Allah loves a servant of his, what does he do? I, I, imagine this. We talked about it briefly last night. Allah loving you. And, and just, imagine, just take a time. Just say, Allah loving you. Subhanallah. Allah loving you. He said, if Allah loves you, that's not where it stops. He said, he calls upon Jibreel and he says, Oh Jibreel, I love my servant so and so fulan. You know, be they male or female, Jibreel, I want you to love them. So now Jibreel is commanded to love you. And then not only that, but Jibreel calls upon the dwellers of heaven and he says, Allah loves so and so, that servant of his, and he's commanding you to love him. Do you see where this gets? Imagine that you get to that point. And then you speak of self-worth, self-value, self-image. Every time I say, La ilaha illallah, that just boosts my ego. Just boosts my morale. Just boosts everything. And I say, Allah just made a mention of me. No one can take that away. And this is something that you can do all the time, subhanAllah. I will not wait for, you know, uh, a talk show host to give approval about Islam. The same way that I do get mad. But it really does not affect how I feel about myself, alhamdulillah. Because... A Rush Limbo or some Larry Elder or some Phil Graham said something about me, that's not going to make me look down upon myself. They can say whatever they want. And Allah, sometimes it gets to be so sad that the people that are making these statements are people that are not even worthy, morally worthy of making these statements. Jimmy Swaggart is speaking of morality. Jimmy Swaggart? It's like Jeffrey Dahmer speaks of human rights. Wallahi, wallahi. How, how do you explain this? All 
Pat Robertson, Phil Graham, these people were segregationists. They were against blacks and whites being together. And now they speak as if they're the gods of morality, the gods of what's right and what is wrong. And they all look at them and they're pedophile and... Oh, come on now, astaghfirullah azim, but of all priests and ministers who are speaking of pedophile, you follow with me here? These are the people now that we are seeking their approval. We seek their, you know, you are good people. And this is when I'm going to feel good about myself. Subhanallah. That's not how it works, my brothers and sisters. So as a result, I conclude by saying that it is very important that not feel or fool yourself. Feel good about yourself, but do not fool yourself. And make sure that where you get this, is not from material or outside sources. If you limit your approval about yourself only to outside sources, then you have literally enslaved yourself to these outside sources. Because now your happiness is pending upon their approval. What happens if they don't approve? What happens if they don't? You shouldn't be feeling good about yourself. Feeling good about yourself starts from within. But then from where? Our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fact that we are being Muslims. And remember, this does not mean that this is only theory, like something that is, you know, up there, like someone who's hallucinating. No, you show this in action. So when you make a mention of Allah by name, but you don't do it by deeds, that is very trivial and that is very shallow. When you claim to love Allah, but you do not show that in action, again, that becomes very shallow. When you want to be in peace with yourself, but you don't show this, or when you want to be in peace with others, but you don't work for them, then again, that also makes you a very shallow person. And that is a great mistake to make. My time is up, yeah, I think. Okay.